Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to Write with Cruise. So far in this series of mini lessons looking at ancient writing systems, we have looked at Phoenician, alphabetic cuneiform and linear B. Today we're going to look at Egyptian hieroglyphs. For this lesson you might find it helpful to download the How to Write Your Name in Egyptian Hieroglyphs worksheet from the Cruise Project website. Egyptian hieroglyphs were used to write the Egyptian language over several millennia from about 5,000 years ago until the 4th century AD, a period of over 3,000 years. That's longer than the period between now and when Phoenician was written down. In all this time, the hieroglyphic writing system changed remarkably little, although other writing systems were also developed to write the Egyptian language in that time. Egyptians often incised hieroglyphs in stone, but they would also write them in ink on papyrus. Egyptian hieroglyphs look like pictures. Indeed, a hieroglyph can stand for the thing it looks like, so this sign, which is the plan of a house as seen from above, can mean simply house. However, hieroglyphs can also stand for the sounds of the word represented. In this case, the word for house sounded something like per, that is, with the consonants p and r. So as well as standing for house, this sign can also represent the consonant sounds p and r. In this way, Egyptian hieroglyphs are like Phoenician and Ugaritic, in that they are mostly used to write consonants rather than vowels. Let's see if we can write a name using hieroglyphs. My name is Robert. In principle then, to write my name, we take the spelling of my name in our alphabet. We then remove the vowels. Now we can use the sheet to write the Egyptian signs for these consonants. For Egyptians, writing was as much about art as it was about function. They liked their signs to look neat and symmetrically arranged as far as possible. One thing we can do to achieve this is to place the sign for T underneath the sign for R, like this. They particularly like to arrange long thin signs above one another. Now let's try to write the name of an Egyptian king, Tutankhamun. You've probably heard of him. Tutankhamun ruled over Egypt about three and a half thousand years ago. You may have seen his famous death mask. Let's take his name written in our alphabet and remove the consonants, just as we did before. In this case we can also use the W sign to write the vowel U, giving us this. One way of writing Tutankhamun in Egyptian is to write these consonants with the Egyptian consonant signs just as we did before. However, in practice the Egyptians didn't usually write like this. They had other signs which could stand for sets of consonants written together. In this case they grouped together the consonants N and H and wrote them with one sign. They also grouped together the M and N consonants and wrote them with another single sign, although in this case they also liked to keep the N sign to help them remember the value of the second consonant. If we take our first spelling of Tutankhamun and replace the N and H sign and the M and N sign with these new signs, we get this. So, we've now spelled out all the sounds that the Egyptians wanted to write for Tutankhamun. At the moment though, the signs look rather like a long string. Remember that the Egyptians liked to make their writing look visually appealing by stacking the long thin signs above one another. Well, we can do that in this case like this. Something the Egyptians liked to do was to put a ring round their king's names. This ring is called a cartouche, and it was a way of marking out their king's names as special. Here is a picture of the cartouche of the king Tutmos III. We can do that for Tutankhamun. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to write in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Why not have a go at writing your own name by looking at the worksheet on the Cruise Project website, and perhaps even pretend you're an Egyptian king by putting a cartouche round your own name. We'll be back soon to look at another ancient writing system.